Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video we are doing part 2 of From a Changeling Star, which is the first book of a two book series called the Star Stream series by Jeffrey Carver. A link to part 1 will be in the upper right hand corner. Now let's continue. The trip from Cantano Sky Base to Port Grissenden Orbital City took 9 hours. The next morning they went to the European Crafts Guild who built Ruskin's ship for him. Fasil, his contact, gave them a tour of the Starship factory. Fasil advised Rushkin that he would be able to take delivery of his ship tomorrow. That night, while Rushkin and Tamika were shopping, Rushkin thought he saw a glimpse of someone, the person who had killed him, but it was a brief glimpse. The next morning, as they prepared to leave, Fasil told him he had two messages, one he handed to him and the other one was in the ship's computers. Meanwhile, Gans sabotaged a Tandesco courier ship so that it could blow up in K-Space and that he can take the ship's place and head to Beetlejuice where he would kill Ruskin. Ruskin, Tamika and Max got on their ship and took off. One of the messages he got was from Judith, who warned him that there was someone masquerading as an oracle who was going to try to remove him. Their passage into K-Space allowed Max to see and feel some of the contents of their mind, and he warned Ruskin that Tamika was having doubts about someone and that he should speak with her. Tamika said that she saw in Max's mind during the transition that he was a friend of the Karain. And since the Karain are nully humans and it was a nully human that tried to kill Rushkin, at least now she is a bit wary of Max. Bright began to wonder, maybe the voices were not dreams and were not death. Maybe the voices was of life, a new beginning. The only time in its long life that Bright had ever seen new life appear was far away in the dark, in the void. So it sang out its question to the nearest stars. It knew that it may have to wait a long time for a reply. It wondered if the voices were new life coming from it. So it sang to it, hoping for an answer. It wondered if the voices would bring new life from the death of the old. It waited for an answer to its questions. Life was long and it could wait. Meanwhile, Tamika is beginning to question Max about his friendship with the Karain. And Rushkin is trying to understand what Breakstar and Star Moves have to do with each other. The answer is buried in his mind and he can't reach it. But Daxter had placed two agents in his mind to help. And with their help, he was able to remember Project Breakstar. The Star Moose Station is there apparently to initiate Project Breakstar, which is to start the process of initiating a supernova within Beetlejuice. And doing this would turn it into an interstellar gateway. And this in turn could lead to war because everybody, every group would want to try to control it. It is now understandable why people would kill, but he still doesn't understand why they would try to kill him. What did he have to do with it? He doesn't know. They had three days to figure out what he had to do with it, because in three days, they would reach star moves. The transition back to normal space caused both the unfriendly Nags and Dax to lose control. So Ruskin began to physically change. Dax managed to get control of it and reverse the process so Ruskin became normal once again. They had finally arrived at Beetlejuice. Meanwhile, Gans came out of K-Space a little while after Ruskin did. He quickly located Ruskin's ship and wondered if he should destroy it now, but Jeeves told him they should wait. That's when his ship was challenged by an Alliance warship. He quickly replied that his ship was the TS Unity bringing scientific observers from the Triune Science Committee and he requested clearance or escort. A patrol ship also confronted Willard and his ship and wanted to know what the name of his ship was and he told them that the name of his ship is the AS Enigma and the patrol ship began escorting him in. Two patrol ships escorted the Enigma in through the end space force field that protected the station from the sun's radiation. After they had docked, security came on and checked every inch of the ship. They then allowed Willard, Tamika and Max onto the station, but they separated Willard from Tamika and Max since Willard is the only one with clearance and the other two didn't. 
have clearance. They would have to stay there until Willard can find someone to vouch for them. They told him that a Dr. Shari Annie was waiting for him, but he couldn't quite remember who that was. They took him to the control room, and when she called out to him, that's when he remembered her, Talia Shariana. She began to explain certain things to him. Apparently, half the station was shifted into end space. They are hoping that that will protect the station from the supernova when it happens. As she led him to the control station, he began to remember certain people. It also turns out that Talia is expecting some improvements that Willard has been working on and he has no idea what improvements she's talking about. So he's winging it until his memory comes back. He hopes it comes back soon. After bringing him up to date, Talia went with him to meet his friends Max and Tamika. She's the one that will have to approve what type of access they get while on the station. With the help of Dax and the other things that Daxter had put in his mind, Willard remembered that he was the one that created Project Breakstar. Without him, it wouldn't exist. And he now knows the goal of Project Breakstar. It is to use the upcoming forced supernova of Beetlejuice to create an interstellar gateway. His scientific knowledge and capabilities are beginning to return. Bright could feel all these new voices, each one different. It tried to speak to them, but they wouldn't answer. It will wait for an answer. It will keep talking to them and asking. Gans finally got permission to board the station, but only as an observer. He would be restricted from going into certain areas of the station. Meanwhile, Jeeves was trying to figure out if Ruskin have achieved stability. And what kind of stability? Was it under the control of the nags of Broda and Gominsky? Under the control of the K-Rain nags? Or under the control of Eric Daxter's nags? Or would his own personality gain control? Or will he have an uncontrolled violent transformation? And it found it ironic that it may have to help Gantz kill Ruskin if the violent transformation happens. Meanwhile, Tamika was finally granted observer status. Not only that, but she was now hearing a voice in her head that said it was Dax and that it had transferred over from Willard to her when they were being intimate. And it changed her security bracelet from brown to gold, giving her access to all secured areas because it said that she may be the only one that could help Ruskin because he is now in danger. There was a section of the station that they called Room Zeta. It was a remote station deep into the heart of the sun and is connected to the rest of the station by a K space peninsula. It would be the best place to get readings from, but it's also the most dangerous because if something happened, they'd have to cut it loose and it and everyone in it would probably get vaporized. Ruskin volunteered, saying that it could make the difference between success and failure, guiding everything right towards the end. Just then, Dax warned him to get out of the room. Dax had lost control and Willard began to change. A different programming took over his mind, one of consuming rage to destroy the project, the station and everyone in it. When he heard Talia and the security robot outside the door of the room he was in, he launched his attack, disabling the robot and dragging Talia into the room. He assumed that the Ruskin personality was wiped out and now he was going to kill the other person who could make the project successful, Talia. Meanwhile, Talia's Dax was talking to her and helping her to find Willard. It told her that it figured out that the enemy nags had been programmed to get Willard to commit murder. When he had attacked her back in her apartment, that was an aberration, but she was able to break their hold on him and she might be the only one able to do it again this time. Meanwhile, Gantz has been trying to get into a secure area without success because he needed to see if the programming had took over Ruskin and he was able to complete the mission or if he'd have to kill Ruskin and complete the mission himself. Then a young worker saw Gantz trying to get into the secure area and confronted him. Gantz then killed him took his bracelet, which was silver, and was able to get into the secured area of the station. Meanwhile, Willard have not killed Talia yet. He was delayed because of the battle going on in his mind for control. Just then, the door to the room vaporized and Tamika stepped in. The entity controlling him did not recognize her, but when she said his name, the entity controlling him began to lose the battle. He turned back into Willard and collapsed next to Talia, who lay unconscious on the floor. Dax then told Tamika what to do. She placed her hands over Talia's eyes and Dax sent nags into her. She then put her hands on 
Willard's face and her Dax communicated with his Dax and helped gain control of Willard. They now understood what he was programmed to do. He quickly told Tamika he loved her and got out of the room before the security robots showed up. Project Breakstar will take a hyperstring that's anchored at the black hole at the center of the galaxy and the plan is to anchor it to the black hole that Beetlejuice will turn into. And an interstellar gateway will form at the path of the hyperstring from the Beetlejuice black hole to the black hole in the center of the galaxy. When security finally arrives, Talia backs up Tamika, saying that she has her permission to be there. Meanwhile, Willard, with Dax's help, figures out that the assassin is a Tendasco, illusionist who is able to manipulate visual perceptions at a distance. When Willard got to the room to speak with Max, he recognized that the assassin was also there looking at him. Dax was also able to free up more of Willard's memories. He had promised to work with Broda and Kominsky to ensure that the Stargate would be for everybody, not just for the Alliance. But they betrayed him and infected him with nags that were programmed to have him hate Tandesco as a cover and to also get the gate for them and if that failed, destroy it and kill anyone that could make it. That's when Willie really decided to go to room Zeta, which is deep in the heart of the sun, and Max decided to go with him. Willard sent Max to get the files on Breakstar from their ship. Once he came back, he went to Talia, because he needed her help to get to room Zeta. When he got to Talia, the assassin was there, and then it made its move. It released cyanide in the control room in an attempt to kill people, but Willard used the laser in his finger to shoot at him and stop him and he managed to escape out of the control. They got to the transport car that was to take them to room Zeta but at the last minute the assassin killed the guard that was sent with them and jumped into the car just as the door closed. So he was in there with Max and Willard. Once they were all in the car, Gans, Willard and Max, Jeeves who had been downloaded with the break star files called for a truce. Apparently the second message that was sent to Willard when they were at the Orbital City was a copy of Jeeves. Both Willard and Gans accepted the truce for now. Then they got to room Zeta, which is a windowless room that was deep in the heart of the sun. From this room, he needed to try and guide the hyperstring precisely so that it would be in the right spot when Beetlejuice turns into a black hole so that it can be anchored properly. And now as the station was generating the end of the star, Bright called out, my children, what, how, why? Max sensed the star's mind crying out, and Gans was not sure what to do. There were things happening here that he did not understand. Then Gans felt the mind of the star. Willard also heard the star's questions. Who are you? Why? Why? Are you killing me? It was then that Dax and Willard realized that the Korean also had nags in him, and that Max knew about it. At that moment, Gans struck him, attempting to kill him by sending a needle through his chest, but Dax dissolved it and healed him, and then he yelled for Jeeves to turn off the light, which it did. Then Willard and Gans began fighting in the darkness. Willard's nags gave him extra strength and the ability to see in the dark, while Gans sent his nags out to dissolve Willard's arm, but as fast as his nags was working, Willard was rebuilding his arm, and then shot Gans with his laser. Then Gans figures if he can't kill Willard, he'll destroy the council and they won't be able to complete the project, and that's what he did. The core of the star collapsed and sent out a shockwave. Meanwhile, Tamika and Talia watched from the control room of the station as the star began its collapse. Bright wondered as it was dying, is new life going to come from this? And he still sang the question, why? And Max reached out to Willard, telling him that he betrayed him with the Kiran, just trying to save him from the others. And Willard was finally able to speak to Bright. And he apologized to Bright for killing it. And he told Bright that they could join together into something new. And Bright gathered all their minds together. Willard, Max, Gans, Dax, and Jeeves. And all these minds merged together to become one, a new life. The last thing that new mind did was to reach out to Tamika and say, I love you, 
goodbye. On the station, Tamika and Talia and others watched as the black hole formed, as did the Stargate. And Tamika heard in her mind Willard's final words, Tamika, I love you, goodbye. Talia and Tamika both know that the gate was formed, but it is anchored to the black hole and they're not sure where it is. They also feel that Willard's consciousness may have survived, so they decide to work together to find the answers to both of those questions. And the new life born of many that became one now existed in a place where no life existed before. The new life was the mind of the gateway of the star stream. And that is how the book ends. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe if you haven't. Give us a like, drop us a comment, and I will see you in the next video.